All right, hello LinkedIn and YouTube. We are live today with the one and only Andreas Kretz. He is the founder of Team Data Science and his big focus in life is data engineering. So I can't wait for you to meet him. Before I bring him on stage though, I do wanna let you know that this is a special LinkedIn Live episode where you're actually going to get a chance to win. Uh, basically 10 winners will be announced by the end of the session um, well, maybe an hour or so after the session, basically you'll get to see a, you'll get to receive a one month subscription to Andreas's data engineering program. So I'm going to bring Andreas into the show so he can um, introduce himself. Hello, Andreas. Hi, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Nice thanks to be uh, back thanks on. For on the live today. I know you do your own um, live events, so I know it must be interesting to be a guest on the show. Yeah, yeah. The last time we had a live together was a bit chaotic for my car, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was. And the one before that, I remember you singing some songs and. Uh, oh, that, that I'm getting red already. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Our lives are always fun. So for everyone who's joining us, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, also, let me know if you can hear both of us. Okay, I'm, I'm experimenting by live streaming from my phone to avoid any issues that I had on my last LinkedIn Live. But anyways, Andreas, why don't you uh, provide a, an intro? Who is Andreas Kretz? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Andreas. I'm a data engineer, so I'm not the typical data science role that like everybody is talking about data scientists. I'm a data engineer. I come from a computer science background. And for the past, let's well, uh, is it nine years, eight and a half years, I worked uh, within the big data. It started within the big data realm when big data was the big hype topic. And basically it developed into this data engineering role uh, where I was a data engineer, then currently a team lead for data engineering um, team. And I decided then this year to try something new, start up with uh, team data science where I help people data with data engineering learning data engineering so team data science what is that what is that really well it's uh you can it has multiple like multiple things first of all i'm, I'm having there my data engineering academy mm -hmm. that is basically a step-by-step -step, you know i would it's hard to call it course but a step-by-step -step program uh, where basically from the beginning to uh creating a project to learning everything you need to uh, doing uh, your CV and to applying to jobs to get a data engineer role, basically. And then I have I have a coaching there, what I do. Uh, it's a personal coaching with Zoom calls. And I also have um, uh, courses from, from really good trainers where I know that they're good and they have good courses like yourself, Kate, and uh, a few other people. Basically, not uh, data engineering. These are these are then things for data governance, for data scientists, uh, courses or coaching, and uh, your data visualization stuff. So, data visualization. That's more or less yep. team data science. So I, I I use team data science, not data engineering. So I, I don't want to limit it completely to data engineering, but also bring value to everybody else who's in the data science field. Cool. Awesome. So I'm just checking in on the comments. We've got people joining us from all over the all over the world. Diplop um, says that he started learning from your website, so so that's cool. Cool. Got people from Egypt, Australia. Um, LinkedIn user says we can hear you from, from Texas. Okay. <laughs> that's that's very good. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, LinkedIn. that's important. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, people is joining us from uh, Mumbai. We got people from Morocco. I love how international these LinkedIn lives get. Um, so we've got a good crowd on now to announce that there will be 10 winners that are receiving a one, um, one month subscription to your data science. I mean, data engineering, somewhat course, maybe not course. No, it, it's, a, it's basically it's a membership program where I don't want to sell it as a $100, $200 course. I, I made it as a monthly subscription, monthly subscription membership, whatever you want to call it. So it's it's very easy. You can use it as long as you like. And I'm I'm bringing every week new uh, new stuff and a live stream to the to the platform and basically make it cheap. So because uh, I'm not yeah, 
I'm not into three and four hundred dollar online courses. He yeah. doesn't want to make money, guys. He wants to help <laughs> the world learn more about sure. the but like twenty dollars, um twenty dollars yeah. a month for your subscription, right? Yeah. I think it's fair and and yeah. And you're adding new new content every month so people yeah. Stick around I mean, for that new content. Currently, every week, I'm, I'm building, right now, I'm building a fundamentals course where basically everything you need to actually start with data engineering. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Okay. So 10 winners will be selected based on the types of comments or questions that you're dropping on the LinkedIn Live or if you're joining us from YouTube on YouTube Live. And um, Andres and I will get together about an hour after the session and we'll announce the 10 winners who, who will receive that one month subscription. So if you got questions or comments and um, around data engineering, feel free to put those in. And this is all part of um, basically Team Data Science is a, a community partner for the dedicated conference that's coming up. Uh, I'd love to just let you guys know if you've not signed up yet, please go to storybydata.com slash dedicated conference so you could sign up. It's a free conference, highly recommend you guys to join. And um, while you're looking at websites, definitely go to teamdatascience.com to learn more about the course. In case you're not a winner, you know, you can still get it for, um, you know, under $20 a month. All right. So I did see uh, a few people and a few questions here. So there's a question here from Alexander. Which career is more lucrative financially, data engineering or data science? Well, if you're if you're straight uh, about the money, I think uh, the data scientist usually is is a bit higher, uh, has a bit of higher salary. It's also the job where you where people most likely are looking for someone with a PhD and and so on. Mm -hmm. But it, it, generally, these are not uh, these are two jobs more or less on the higher salary end. It's not that I like uh, everybody who's coming from a from a university can do these jobs. It's like you have to have some, some, uh, some practice or some experience, life experience. Uh, you also need a lot of skills to actually do it. So uh, the yes, there is there is a uh, a difference, but it's uh, it's not as high as as like I would say when when you think about a web developer or something. Usually, unfortunately, web developers are. are bit lower on the lower end mm -hmm. and these are these are more high skill jobs so okay all right thanks yeah. for that i think maybe for those who um i know most of my community um network is probably on the data science data analyst side of things can you provide an overview of exactly what is data engineering well um if you if you think about data engineer or data science in general um i'll bring something up here um doesn't matter. I, I, no, you can bring it up. You want to share? Yeah, I, uh, uh, oh, actually, I wanted to bring this up before we talk, and now I forgot it. So, well, while you're pulling that up, I'll yeah, just. Yeah. So, Alexander says, thank you for your answer. Andreas, I thought the opposite was true and engineers would be better rewarded. I think it, it, it's a case by case basis. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, the, the, the hype around uh, data scientists is still uh, is still there and they're, they're thought to bring the most value. So let me show you something. Um, can you see my screen? Um, yes, I'm trying to. Let me make that full. Yeah, go back to sharing your screen. Let me make that full. Yep. Yep. There you go. Okay. So basically, the basically the um, the data uh, analyst is is working around here. Is working a lot around uh, BI tools and so on. And uh, that's that's like he's more on the visual side, on the on the analytic side, on the business side. And where the where the data scientist is working a lot, he's working a lot in the actually within the processing within a processing framework, taking taking data, making analytics, and uh, yeah, bringing basically new new value to to the company like uh, um, 
like forecasting uh, uh, house prices or whatever. So it, that's basically the, already a difference between analysts and between between data scientists. And the engineer is more or less around around all this. So the engineer is um, the engineer is in charge of uh, making sure that the data can come into the into the platform, uh, creating APIs, creating uh, creating databases to actually have other systems access it. He's uh, he's uh, in charge of the data flow. Like a lot of data is coming in, you need a buffer, and uh, then setting up the the processing frameworks, figuring out what's the best way to store each type of data uh, used by data scientists or analysts, and put it put it in the right in the right storage solutions. So it makes sense, and that he basically helps other people to. Um, to work with the data and on the visualization stuff also uh, connects then the tools to the storage or uh, creates another API for for mobile apps or works on creating uh, yeah uh, setting up dashboards or something so it's a it's a highly highly versatile job but always uh, around the engineering part in the in the background that's why I most uh, most of the time call it the plumbing it's the <laughs> plumbing that you don't see right yeah oh, you wait. can you can bring me back okay there you go all right uh, not, not like this, like this. you're so high-tech andres you're my oh, most man i'm yes, I, I, as always i changed something before the stream and then nothing works correctly <laughs> <laughs> no, no we're floating on the, on your own screen um no, we've got so many questions it's actually going to be tough to choose uh 10 okay. best questions at the end of this i'm sure but you ready you ready for more sure bring it okay on. So this is an interesting one. Uh, what is salary ranges for someone starting as a data engineer but has good industry experience? Give us numbers. <laughs> I know that's tough. <laughs> uh, that's that's tough. That depends on actually on w a lot on where you live. So, like if you're living in, uh, so I, I'm familiar with Germany, and uh, like when when you're uh, when you're in uh, larger uh, cities or big cities like like Munich, Berlin, uh, they, they these are large cities where it's where it costs or where the where the standard of of living no, not the standard the cost of living is very high, mm -hmm. and that's why they're paying you usually more. But um, well, in euros, I think it's it's always depends. It's like before tax, usually it's. 65 I, i'm guessing 65 70 70 k that's 70 80 something dollars um is that that would be my guess for for a a junior mm -hmm. a, a yeah, i know there are a lot of a lot of factors that can affect that location the actual experience the demands the industry so exactly if if you're in a like like what i'm what i'm guessing and that's only a guess but when i when you're when you're in a high area of of need, of demand, like something in like in Silicon Valley, where oh, yeah, like a hundred companies that need engineering, and there are only a handful of data engineers, then they're going to pay more. But if you're if there's not that much, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean supply and demand. Thank you. Exactly, for as always. Uh, question here from Patrick: Is data engineering a requirement for a data scientist? That's a great question. Um, yes and no. That depends a lot on what you're actually doing as a data scientist. So, mm -hmm. um, and and on your project, like if you're uh, a project have different has different phases, like a proof of concept phase, a MVP phase, and then you're going r r towards uh, real production. And if you're in a proof of concept phase where uh, you just you need to set it up you need to try it out and and show that it works then the data scientist may have to do a lot of engineering work because there are not so many people who are doing the the background work um, when you're moving towards uh towards production what you what you need and what you're going to see is that there are going to be engineers there to do the actual work because uh you have to think about it a data a data uh, scientist has 
the, or the main the main thing where the data scientist is trained upon or trained towards is analytics is doing mm -hmm. machine learning is yeah you is doing is analyzing data so it actually it doesn't make really make sense to bring him on and do him uh, let him do a lot of stuff in a role where he's needed to do engineering and you know setting up stuff because he's uh, that's not his primary his primary goal and his primary area of 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 knowledge you know yeah and so yeah that's also when you go uh, towards uh, operations development is one thing you can all uh, a data scientist also can develop something uh, set up a few systems uh, at some point you need you need opt and then it's it's useless okay all right thanks for that complicated question uh, a bit longer answer sorry <laughs> no no it's okay Let, let's see your answer for this this is uh from danny danny's asking outside of data engineering academy what free or low-cost resources do you recommend for learning data engineering and what sorts of, of projects would prospective employers be looking for um on github account and or portfolio wow uh, can you can you let that let that question on here for a second? So, um, what free low course resources? There are basically if you if you know what to learn, uh, there are it's everything is for free. You don't need a course for that. It's, I'm right now. I'm as I said. I'm working on the fundamentals part. Like, what do you need to get into into data engineering? Is like you need uh, coding skills in one programming language, Python. You're going to find something for free. I have a lot of resources for that. Then uh, you need uh, some database skills like relational database with SQL. That stuff is here for tens of years, so it's that stuff's for free. And yeah. then you you need some 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 uh, some uh, agile development stuff that you can learn, and Linux a few Linux skills. So th that stuff is. You can you can even Google this. It's it's no big deal. Yeah. Um, what sorts of project uh, which should you do? Well, I, I what I always recommend to my students is uh, you focus on and that's also a part of the of the uh, data uh, engineering academy. You focus on uh, actual job openings. What is what is open here that mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is interesting to you. Like, or if, if you already have an idea, like, okay, I want to go into the automotive route, or I want to do like uh, e-commerce or financing. And then you go that route, you search specifically for jobs in that route, squeeze out what is, what is actually, what do they need? What kind of stuff do they, and sometimes it's a bit cryptic in, in job descriptions. I think you know what I'm talking yes. about. <laughs> and so, and then you start and, and building your project from from there on basically tailoring it to to these to these companies and then i mean you're doing a github you're doing a few blog posts and so on and put this into your cv and you have you're already very very good yeah i like what you said in the beginning that if you know what exactly what you want to learn and what you want to focus on it's easy because you can actually get all that stuff for free i think it's understanding what are the things you need to learn and I think that's what you do really well at teamdatascience.com. Yeah. And I highly recommend people actually go and check that out. Um, is because you've done the hard work of actually researching and knowing what people have to learn and then putting that into a consumable format where people could just learn it yeah. instead of having to research and understand, is this the thing I need to know or is this the thing I need to know? That's, that's well, Kate, I, I realized this a long time ago, like I know, I, there will be in in each of the uh, the blocks that I've just shown and each of the tools that you use there will be a lot of people uh, who are who are way way better than me in each of these things but w one uh, one thing that people usually lack is the big picture basically w what should I do what what is the essence that I should learn where should I what is the right direction and that's that's what I build around uh, uh, the the data engineering academy on team data science is is showing you the right path but the coding usually you have to do that that's the hard yeah. part and the fun part the fun part for for some 
So next question for you, Andreas, from Lakshmi. Uh, do you think the positions like data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer, or data analyst are correctly classified in the industry or the skill set demand is correctly um, demarcated? Okay, do you, you need help me? What is demarcated? What, what does that mean? Um, so is the skill set demand correctly? I guess it, are, are, we, are the job descriptions, let's say for a data analyst, correctly describing okay. a data analyst uh, role and data scientist for a data scientist role. Yeah, okay. Well, these uh, well these three roles like like uh, uh, data scientist, ML engineer, uh, these are two that are, that are sometimes confused or, or not 100% clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why these two are usually, yeah, it's like the, the scientist should do the scientist work should do the analytics work and like the ml engineer is more for automation and for for bringing it into production like mm -hmm. um so these are a bit confused and more entangled and, and not so clear often um i think th generally i think these are these are really great great descriptions but I, there are some things that you see often like data analyst people are, are calling themselves data scientist like I, there's a prominent guy on YouTube, I don't say the name, but uh, he, he always calls himself a data scientist. And then you find out like he's an analyst at Facebook. So th these are these are different. These are different roles. And if you're an analyst, yes, you're you're doing a lot of analytics and business analytics and finding out like how do the users uh, interact with the platform and so on. But that's not exactly what a data scientist does, right? Yeah. So these these are yeah, but generally these are these are very good descriptions. I really like them. Yeah, I think what I've seen in, in on the job descriptions is like you said, uh, sometimes you'll see a position that has a job description for a data scientist, but they call it a data analyst because they're hoping to um, you know, pay less for for yeah. the person going to, and sometimes the opposite, they have a data analyst role, they call it a data scientist to encourage people who want to be a data scientist to come in. Yep. So I think forget the actual titles when you're looking for jobs and just go straight to the requirements and description of your day to day responsibilities and then make that decision for yourself of what you think you're actually doing versus what that job title is. Because in the end, who cares what you're called? It's all about the work that you're actually doing. I know a lot of times That's the title true. correlates with the salary, um, but just look at look at the salary, look at the job descriptions and requirements. Uh, sometimes maybe ignore the title until until companies get that yeah. right and it's, But it's also for for engineers like you find a data engineering roles and the yeah. the description isn't really there. They it they they, they well we need uh, uh, one cloud platform and we're this and that and when you look at it, either they they don't want to show what they're doing. And, and want you to know what you don't want you to know what you are cutting uh, got to do or yeah. they're they have no idea what this is for like <laughs> like okay nah, forget this this don't apply to it it's it's stupid they they don't know what they're doing like it's, it's yeah it's funny awesome so ready next question ayush sure. so what are some common misconceptions that people particularly have about data engineers well, the, the the general conception is that this is something that is that is not as worthy of doing as like a, a data scientist and that it's uh. more of a of a yeah, a nerd nerd thing and people with uh, glasses, big headphones. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. And like like data science, scientist is always that like that's the guy who's doing the presentations and he's working with the clients and uh, and he's he's going to he's going to get all the praise for his great work. A bit of that is true, but yeah. um, the engineers in general, uh, you don't need a uh, hundred percent introverts for this because engineers need to work. Uh, have it's a it's a broad field you need to work in the on the technology side you need to communicate a lot with the data scientists or with the analysts it's it's a very versatile field like not everybody can do it and some people think ah, that this is the, everybody can do that but it's actually f to really bring it into production and and not doing proof of concepts bring it into production that's it's a hard it's a hard thing you need a lot of skills for that yeah 
Okay, yeah, we've got uh, we've got some comments here. Uh, one from Andrew oh, saying Andrew. there's a lot of free content around. You can't argue that, but knowing what should you focus on learning and getting support and guidance when you get stuck is such a great reason to invest in your learning with something like this. Um, so Andreas, he really likes what you've done. And I know Andrew, you're you're launching your own thing, Data Science Infinity. So plug for, for Andrew Jones, check out yeah. his stuff as well. Also have a, a link on my side to, to his stuff. So yes, so it's a closely knit community awesome. here of, yeah. of course developers yeah. in the data space. Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah it's with the with the getting stuck that's also why I, why I started with the coaching yeah. it's like I, I want to help when I think about doing a project it should be easy but there are a lot of for beginners there are a lot of uh, like how you call it hurdles or something that mm, obstacles easy. hurdles yeah obstacles it's it's everything's running smoothly and then ah uh, don't you just wear here you know what should I do now? And, and then you need somebody who is who is uh, who has experience and tells you, okay, go this direction, go this direction. So that's that's why I started the coaching. And Andrew also is going to going to do the coaching, go, going to do his coaching as a, a data scientist for data scientists. So I find this really cool. Great. So here's a question that might be on a lot of people's minds, Andreas, okay. from Tariq. Why did Andreas think of team data science while he was also involved in plumbers of data science? Explain this. Explain this, Andreas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, plumbers of data science is something I'm going to uh, revive at some point. I, I started with plumbers of data science. I called my podcast uh, plumbers of data science and my, my, uh, my YouTube channel at some point. Yeah. Um, then uh, I I got fed up with with the with the podcast uh, because I couldn't get it on uh, on uh, oh man how's it called iTunes okay uh, super annoying <laughs> and then uh, uh, and also I wanted to brand my YouTube channel to my name so that if you if you search my name you find it um, but now the the podcast is actually on iTunes so in the future I'm going to bring that back. So the plumbers of data science thing is not that. It's only I, I call it I call the podcast that. Okay. The team data science I want to do is like, um, well, the future that I that I see on the horizon for team data science is that not only I I am doing the stuff on team data science, so that that I bring also other people in, like not only engineers that I could bring in somebody who's doing data analyst stuff, somebody who's doing data scientist stuff, yeah. and so on. So that's. That's basically, that's why I called it team data science, but the plumbers of data science thing is still there and, and it's going to come back. I love the name plumbers of data science. It's just, you can visualize it, the plumbing of all, yep. I, I, it's, a, it's a team effort and um, data engineering is a, is a part of that whole process. Yeah. A very important part. Um, okay, Umut, there is a growing demand for data scientists every day all around the globe. How will be the coverage of lack of data scientists in the near future? What do you think of for the conversion possibility from other engineering disciplines? Greetings from Turkey. Um, I, mean, I don't think I understood that correctly. So data scientists, the demand is, is, is coming up more and the lack of data scientists. So. Mm -mm. So from all from other engineering disciplines, uh, becoming a data scientist that's also that's possible. I yeah. mean, um, y you can you can go from analyst to scientist. You can go from engineer to scientist. That's 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 all there. Uh, you can also go from data scientist to data engineer. So I, I also had uh, some coaching students who said they're data scientists, but they either wanted to become a data engineer or they say. Well, in, in the current, oh, my glasses are crooked. The kids, I, I, I can never get them straight. You can't <laughs> straight. blame the kids for your <laughs> You, you <laughs> fix them and, and then a ball comes flying, boom. Um, the, well, there are people, because with data scientists, um, as I said, in the beginning, in the early phases, they need to do a lot of engineering. So that's also something they, they need to learn. But generally, what I've seen for data scientists, um, the the hardcore data scientists, like the research data scientists, uh, I don't know if if the demand is is basically unfulfillable, 
because when you see a lot of the new tools that are coming out and they're already came out like where you can code stuff visually or drag some stuff in and choose this and that algorithm and, and send your data through it um that helps a lot of people that are not really like phd uh, data scientists who are doing research all day um, yeah. that helps them a lot in autom autom automation so i'm I th I'm, I'm seeing the more uh, I'm seeing this more as a hype and what we're going to see is that when when more and more people going in or getting into the stages where they need to do uh, uh, operations for their systems and need, then then they're going to see that you need more people than only data scientists and we're still not there a lot of people are still or a lot of, a lot of companies are still in the early stages of their stuff yeah uh, oh god they're coming <laughs> sorry yes i had to <laughs> it's time andreas no uh, we've got some sire so i was muting myself but then that's exactly when you stop talking but we have a really cool question here from Emilio. yes they're coming um how would you describe the roadmap for a data engineer in terms of building the necessary skills give us a roadmap well the roadmap what as I said, the fir the first things that you that you absolutely need is you need a coding skill. You need a language. If it's Java or if it's Python, nowadays a lot of people are coding in Python. So go with Python. It's cool, and and all the I think all the major tools right now are are using Python. So go with Python. Uh, look into databases, into normal SQL databases and into like also documenting your your code like github and collaboration mm -hmm. of stuff um, that's that's the minimum that you need and then you're as as, as i've let me show you show the picture again i'm going to show us something yep I, i'm going to show the picture again uh, like here um take can you see it okay Yes, yes, you can yes. see it. Okay. Like take something from each of these of these uh of these phases. Learn how to build APIs. Learn like a buffer like uh Kafka or something. Look into a processing framework. That could be that could be everything uh, anything. That could be a uh, Spark. That could also be something like Elasticsearch or something. Elasticsearch also has storage in it, but uh, then look at a, a NoSQL database. Uh, that you can use and something for visualization like a a, uh, a dashboard or something or yeah, Grafana or Kibana if you're using Elasticsearch and then that's 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 a general direction I would I would go here and these are the the you can bring me back the the actual thanks the actual uh, skills or the actual tools you need there, that depends on actually where you want to go and what, what companies are looking for there. So it, the, the possibilities are like, are endless or endless. It's, it depends on what, where you want to go and what people need. So, yeah, and I think the roadmap itself, it's, it's going to vary based on where you're starting from. Um, and what your actual destination is there are several routes it seems like that you can take to get there yeah. all right <clears throat> so susan is here oh, how about that. classification guru to data scientist <laughs> so well, i don't know says, i don't know if it's a serious <laughs> I question think, i think susan, <laughs> susan susan would be the best one to, <laughs> to answer this actually susan, we're gonna need you on the show <laughs> to answer that question <laughs> yeah that's that's you can write you can write that question down and ask susan i don't know i don't know I, yeah I don't know. <laughs> okay uh question here from daniel so what do you think about analytics engineering oh god what's that <laughs> analytics <laughs> engineering <laughs> So you're, Daniel, you're bringing... maybe provide a bit more context. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel, uh, please shed shed a small light on what is analytics engineer. I love that. Um, okay, so this is a LinkedIn user, so um, oh. we'll have to find the name. But uh, is the field maturity wise similar to the security field? Right? Um, are you supposed to outperform Gandalf when it comes to doing magic with low quality data? 
I wonder who's asking this question. Well, from from a from a maturity perspective, is um, the whole data engineering part, um, like a lot of a lot of stuff that people, uh, as as you've seen in the in the blueprint that I have also on my GitHub, um, you can find that also that uh, cookbook through my webpage. Um, it's for free. Uh, you're you're going to see that there are a lot of like basic things that have been here for 10, 20 years. So the maturity in these is very, very high. For other stuff, um, like the newer stuff, it's it's coming because mm -hmm. people have experience with Spark, people have experience with uh, Cassandra or whatever. But um, generally, yeah, so, so so generally it's it's there. The the when you think about low low quality data, um, th yes, that's something that not only the data scientist is struggling with, also that is where well, the data engineer is struggling with because um, you need to make sure that the, that the data that comes that comes in is correct. It, it's not it's not malformed or, or whatever. It yeah. it makes sense at some level that the engineer understands, like. The, when you have like you're working with JSON data where there are objects in like name, uh, first name, second name, and so on, like for users, and there there's missing the there's missing first name, second name. Mm -hmm. So and that like from a tweet or something, whatever, right. and that is missing. So for from an engineering standpoint, you know, okay, that thing, you can skip that. That that thing never would will never make sense, and or or. It's, or something else is is missing. Yeah, um, I'm I'm coming from the machine uh, from from the IoT field. Then with sensor data, when you already see that th that sensor data makes no sense, then you can can flush it out. So the data scientist have to, doesn't have to manage it. But yeah, that's it's fun for 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 data scientists and engineers <laughs> and for analysts the thing as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Th thanks for answering that. So we've got a comment here from YouTube now. Um, Scott Miller is saying, seems like data engineering should be a prerequisite for a data scientist since you have to build the pipelines, the plumbing, right, before you can analyze the data. Well, what do you think about that? Well, as I said, um, that depends on that. That depends on the actual uh, stage or uh, your project is and what you're working on. Like if you're if you say you have a proof of concept, you don't need to build any pipelines. Maybe not build to need to build any pipelines at all. You need to yeah. show that that thing, that forecast, that that analytics that is working. Like that that works. Um, when you think about more than uh, when you move forward and some some you ha still have to do a bit of engineering work as a data scientist. It would be. I think it would be nice to have, um, so that you that you can see like, does that does that make sense in a bigger picture in a in an operations picture or yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think not every not every scientist needs uh, data scientist needs engineering skills. Like when you're really when you're into like when you see all these papers from Google and so on, these these guys don't need don't need don't need uh, engineering skills. They might have. And I'm guessing so, but uh, for for that kind of analytics and and really going down and do the maths and so on, forget it. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe understanding enough just to know the what goes on in engineering is important. But I think what's more important is dealing with people like Andreas, right? Learn how to work with the data engineers to be yeah. part of that whole dealing team with me, yeah. <laughs> right? Learn how to talk to these people. You know, it's not I know, always. I know. Easy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true, Kate. Yeah. Sometimes with me dealing is not that easy, but it, in I'm... general, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in general, you're you're absolutely right. You need to, as as it, well, that that makes oh, that's a good point. Well, uh, you need to you need at some level know what the engineer is speaking about. Yeah, it it doesn't need uh, or the data scientist doesn't need to know how it works and how it's get to be configured and everything. Yeah, but he he should know the basics of what what's what's going on there. What is he doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 a good point, Kate. Yeah. 
Um, question here from uh, Wouter. I don't know if I said his name right. Where do you solve the data quality issues? Is it in the source, in the data warehouse, in the front end? Is it in the PowerPoint? <laughs> where do we? Where... Oh God, in the, if it's in the PowerPoint, then yeah, it's in the PowerPoint, my friend. <laughs> the... On the website, <laughs> then, you can only, then you can only fake it. Um, I think it's the these are. How should I explain this? There, these are different. Uh, can, can you uh, can you bring it up again, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. These data quality issues they might be different issues. Mm -hmm. So okay, that, that, uh, basically the 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 level of of insight into the data is different between the scientist and the engineer. Like the engineer can see, okay, does this trans transmission make sense? So is the the quality of the data uh, good that is coming in in terms of like is it built correctly? Uh, is everything there? Like, but that's uh, that's going to some level, and then the next level where the data scientist is is like, okay, uh, does it does the data actually makes make sense how it's coming in? So the levels are different. And, and that's why these people have different insight into the data. So the data engineer doesn't have that much insight into the data. Um, in the data warehouse, oh, when it's already in there, you might not want to have that data in there. And the front end. Mm. <laughs> I think of it like plumbing, right? I mean, you've got you've got the water, the source of the water coming in. You go through all those pipes, and then it's basically in your in your in your cup right here. Yep. So you you want that cleaned as early as possible, and I think the sooner you do that, address the data quality issue, the easier everything will be down the line. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. clean my water now. I mean, yeah. I guess I could filter it or something, but the expectation is that it's been addressed early on, where it's already gone through all this process. You you can see it as as multiple filter stages. Yeah. Like you have the first the first filter who is who is uh, like. How's that called? High grained, low grained. Ah, uh, you know, the the it's a rough sure. filter where yeah. that lets some some stuff through, and then yeah. comes the next one, and then comes the next, then comes the data scientist, then comes yeah. the analyst filter, and then comes the PowerPoint filter, <laughs> where you drop um, almost everything for the for the management and only have this, only have one one number. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I agree. So mo multiple multiple filters throughout the whole process. You know, you you mentioned back when we were talking about how people can get started in data engineering, and I think Andrew also mentioned that it, it helps when you can talk to somebody as you're learning things. And I know you've recently kicked off your coaching program again. Why don't you tell the audience a bit about what your coaching is and how that works? Because um, mm -hmm. some people might be interested in in that kind of one-on-one -on -one or small group coaching. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah, no problem. So as you said, it's it's a group coaching uh, and I, I especially do this basically to, to give you a hand throughout this process of, of learning data engineering. And if you're, if you're a data scientist learning it or if you're looking for a data engineering job, basically get that job. Uh, that we're doing, uh, we're doing Zoom calls right now, uh, up until now two times a week now we're going to do four times a week and um, basically in that coaching calls it's not that we're co we're doing coding in these calls the calls are there for you to help you throughout the throughout the program and basically you're you, like you're doing something you're getting stuck uh, either you message me on slack we have a slack group for that or if it's just a day and you think, ah, I can wait, then you go to the day and then uh, on the Zoom call, we're going to talk about it. Or if you, if with, throughout the week, there are coming up questions um, where you say, oh man, I, I would love to talk to Andreas about that. We're going to do that in the, in the coaching calls. It's like the, the helper, if you're like in the early stages, we have a few worksheets for you to fill out then uh, if, you, if you're not sure, like uh, at some point we, you need to uh, basically organize the tools that you later on need for the platform and you're not sure what it is and where, and then I, I can give you a hand and, and help you with that. So that's, 
yeah or or i'm <clears throat> or you're you need to go to the github and you create a github and i'll help you and give you feedback on the github or your videos that you create or what we also did we're going through your cv and mm. or reorganizing it if you like to share it otherwise we're doing it over slack and but always in in small groups and how, how uh, big are groups how many people are you taking on for the coaching well this this time i'm taking up a uh, maximum 10 and uh i still have uh, still have open slots i didn't uh, i'm not really good at marketing so uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately i was sick this week so uh, we're we're not very many people right now i think we're four right now or three three we're three okay. right now one is in the pipeline a few said they're going to join later so the the groups are usually small i'm i'm going to do this regularly so more people are coming in but yeah, the, it's it's the, usually are small groups. That's why I do it four times a week. Okay. Uh, I don't want to have ten people uh, every time in a group uh, because then you don't have a lot of time. Basically, yeah. People. Usually, one or two people will monopolize that conversation, and yeah. not everyone gets the same value. Yeah, and usually I'm doing this here at ten p.m. Then it, it's if I, if I'm going two hours, then it's midnight. So that would be phew. ten p.m. Uh, Germany time. So 10 p.m. Germany time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, Not everyone and, hears uh, from Germany, Andreas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 p.m. Well, my 10 p.m. and my 6 a.m. is the new time. So that's, that's your, dedication, your midnight. Yeah. That's so, but the, the goal is basically to have these group sessions, and you can you people can hop on and hop off whenever they like. So mm -hmm. the idea is to not only have your see your project, but also listen to other people, interact with other people, get to know the others, and and have a, a small team, data science, you know, have a small <laughs> team where, <laughs> where you, where you, uh, where you can, um, yeah, also experience some other ideas and, and learn not only for your project. So I think, it, and, and people really, really like it. So that's, that's why I bring it back. I, I have, uh, still have three old, uh, students who are going to join. Um, yeah, I initially thought I would not bring it back this, this year, but, uh, it's too much fun. Back by popular demand. And yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that, that's great. That's great that people are seeing the value and they're signing up for this. So definitely, guys, go to teamdatascience.com. Check out the, the coaching. Check out the subscription courses. Um, Andreas and I will announce the 10 winners of the one-month subscription for the data engineering course slash membership, whatever we want to call that. Um, but in order to qualify, you do have to sign up for the dedicated conference. And uh, I highly, highly recommend that you do sign up for that. It's, it's a four track conference, four hours hosted just right here on LinkedIn Live. So I know we've got um, a lot more comments and questions coming in, Andreas, but I know we do have to wrap it up. So the last thing I always ask my guests is where can people go to continue this conversation? Because it looks like people really want to continue the conversation. And where can they learn more? Yeah, well, they can. If you want to find me, you can find me here on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. or uh, on my. You, you can uh, s uh, check out my YouTube channel. It's all uh, also on my Team Data Science uh, page. I have a playlist for that. Um, I have a Team Data Science Telegram channel where you can just pop in and ask questions. Uh, yeah, that's that. Are the, do I have more? <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. I, I'm starting again with Instagram uh yeah yeah okay. and and maybe uh, see each other on the conference because yeah. i know i know it's it's i, I know i'm on your show but uh, and this is not just a plug i i i uh, seen the speakers so i think it's they're, they're really really cool speakers very interesting topics and so i'm going to join and and uh, be in the comments and so yeah I, i'm awesome i'm excited well for it and, and thank you again for uh, Team Data Science for being a community partner. Really appreciate the giveaway. Um, I see some people are commenting that they like the session. And Emily here has already signed up for the conference. Thank you. Very thank good, you. Emily. I'll see you there. All right. Um, on that note, I'll thank you again, Andreas, for making time to do this. And thanks to everybody who's joined us live and who's watching the recording. We appreciate the support and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.